And welcome everybody on YouTube for some Braum Anivia. It's gonna be our next rank up deck. Uh, so far, so good with rank up day today. Uh, this is a deck that um, a lot of people are playing right now. It's a newer deck with uh, both Braum and Anivia being upgraded in the latest patch in patch 10.4. And, we've, and therefore, I've had some people ask about the deck, so I decided to give it a try myself. As you can maybe see here, I've added in some of my own little things uh, to the deck. Um, like for example, the you know just basically some cards that I like. Like there's there's just some things that playing against the deck a lot. There's some things that I don't like about the the deck list that the like kind of the stock deck list that a lot a lot of people play. Um, like there's hapless aristocrat, not a big fan. We're going omen hawk instead. Um, a lot of people play are playing a bunch of kindly tavern keepers, and I just don't really like this card that much. I just don't feel like the heal your nexus three is really that worth it for like that's all you get with the three three. So instead, we're going Avaros and Trapper, because Avaros and Trapper will let us draw an Enraged Yeti, which this is an awesome card at double spelling, and it's important to double spell. Like this, this will give us a one mana five five that we can play on you know like turn five or turn six plus play other things. You know, like turn five, we can play a five, five plus a Braum, or maybe turn seven, we play a five, five plus a Nivea kind of thing. You know, like it just, it fits in really well having a one mana five, five. So I, I like that. I like that more. So we're playing Trapper. And then also I'm just a big fan of Starlet Seer. And I think Starlet Seer fits in this deck perfectly. You know, pumping up Braum, uh, that's like your best target. But you know, you just pump up some other things. And it's just a really good two drop. You already have the Averroes and Sentry, but that's it. And I, I wanted another uh, really good two drop. I wanted to be a little bit lower. I thought that that people have their curves a little too high with like a lot of people playing like three Rekindler, three Vengeance, two Ruination, and the curve's just a little too high. So it's just another good thing uh, to play early on. All right, so th that's that's what I'm going with. So let's let's give this a try. Braum and Nivea. We're gonna be playing five games over in ranked and. Uh, we are two wins away. If we win our first two, we're two wins away from getting out of Platinum and getting to Diamond, which was really the, the goal of the day. Twisted Sejuani was awesome, and it got us there. And I guess I need to uh, change this up. That noise in the background is my one of my dogs, Harvey, chewing on her can. They just had their dinner. She's chewing on that and having a good time. I give them the cans of their canned food afterwards and they just absolutely love it. They just like get all the the last uh, all the last little bits from their can. Okay, so we're going to keep the Braum and Vile Feast, and we'll get rid of both of those. And didn't really, didn't really draw cheap things, which is what we want to draw. There we go. See, look at that. See, basically playing Starlet Seer over like Vengeance and Ruination. Like, look how good the Starlet Seer is right here. Perfect. Just a good card. So. My thinking is they probably don't want to block, like if they have Misfortune, one of the good guys, but not which bad. they do, they don't want to block there because um, the then I can't trade regularly, regularly with this. Okay. Uh, option, Fury or Vile Feast. How important is it to have a Starlet Seer in play? Probably pretty important. Probably pretty important. Yeah, let's do it. This will be a good winter. Love ya. Let's do it. I know that Fear of the North could pair with Braum to challenge. The misfortune better. Is it the boosters? Who knows? I like keeping um, Starlet Seer in play. And it's it's really unlikely they're gonna be able to level up Misfortune next turn. And so worst case scenario in two turns we can vengeance the misfortune. If need be. Do they need our help? Hmm. 
What are they gonna do? We're facing a fellow hawk. Alright, they're gonna use Protector. We'll just challenge the Protector. Get that thing to be one health. That's fine with me. Especially now that we have a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I mean, Time for not a bad use of a rally. Fly away while you can. And we got to just block there. Just taking too much damage. It's obviously not the block I want to do. I got to show you the sights of Buildswater. The sights are fine. The smells, on the other hand. Hmm. All right, gonna go Withering Whale over Vile Feast. Basically, if I go Vile Feast, they can still attack with Quinn pretty easily. Going Withering Whale means to attack with Quinn, they have to have the Quinn die. You know, basically, if they going Withering Whale means yeah, like they they have to kill Quinn to attack. Oh, that thing levels up. That's not the three out of four. Mm. Things leveling up. Right, because the... The rally... So fine. Okay. My talents are frost. My wings, the bitter winds. And Brom is your... Wingman. Huh. I hadn't heard that line before. Um Don't get to don't get to vengeance. Take heart's not doing it. Smell that? A fight to cook it. This attack puts misfortune down to one. A world in perfect stone. Which you know, we may be able to Vile Feast, but if they go straight to attacks, I don't get to. Oh my gosh. That's pretty nice. Feel the sizzle. No one goes hungry. I will endure. That puts me down to one. Alright, got a block here to go to three. Yuck. I think it's I think it's worth it though. We just gotta try to stay alive. Um So we have to worry about. Can you? Can the O2 block? Yeah, we can block with the O2, right? Okay. Def definitely have to worry about another misfortune. Like if they just like play like a two or a three mana card, then we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Because then what am I supposed to do? Play like Avaros and like this? Because they could still have. Gosh, they could still have misfortune. So if I if I play anything. Then we die to misfortune because then I don't have vengeance for it. But I think I think that's just the cost of doing business. I think I just have to play something. And just hope they don't have misfortune, I guess. Yeah. How can Brom help? So we gotta kill this so we still have three blockers. Like if I kill if I kill the grizzled ranger, then we don't have three blockers. Or like, yeah, we still have three blockers, but they would still have four attackers. That's what I mean to say. Is that this would you know we wouldn't actually remove an attacker. Nice, 
the way. All right, so that's definitely good for me that we get the extra 3-3. Three, three. It's okay if Brom dies. That, that like, it's better for them if they just attack all out. Probably, because now I have this 3-3 three, three that can block pretty profitably, and I don't have to throw the Agnivia in here. Yeah, it would have been better if they just attacked all out. Eat up, friend. Stand behind bro. Is it worth it throwing the egg away instead of Brom? Actually, probably. It's still three turns before that egg is transforming. They're out there. I'll spot them. All right, we staying alive. And I guess because I was saying that we were going to die to the three damage that Misfortune could do, but I guess because we would gain a life from Vile Feast, we weren't going to necessarily just immediately die to that. So I was a little more safe than I was leading on. Well, that didn't look make our Starlet Seer look very good. <laughs> we just got rid of our Starlet Seer trigger. So they're passing. I wonder if they have another Relentless Pursuit in hand. Tracker. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about our chances now, especially with them having an empty hand. They're top decking. I have Vengeance to kill Champion if they draw Champion. Specifically Misfortune. So we're looking pretty good here, little Poro. And opponent agrees. Yeah, having that Starlet Seer, you know, just helps slow down slow down the opponent. Just having that two three. That was definitely important. You imagine if we just had if we just had Vile Feast for that turn. Yuck. We would have got ran over. We definitely would have lost if we just had Vile Feast. Like if if that Starlet Seer was just another like Vengeance or whatever, we would have gotten ran over. Is a vengeance or a ruination. Okay, a Nivea mirror. Not sure if the, the mirror is actually favored for us. They're probably you know going bigger like a lot of people are doing, and so therefore um, gonna be in a better spot. I like this opening hand. Good opening hand. Hawk you like a hurricane. Card art's pretty cool too. These owl statues. Ooh, who goes there? 
Who goes there? Giddix, that's what I will say. Who? Alright, the thorniest toad. Being a thorn in my side. See, I kind of figured that was going to be their block on that thing, and I, I didn't mind that because that that uh, helped set up my Brom. I'm telling you, people will overplay this kind of Tavern Keeper. Take heart. Take heart. All right, so they'll gain two life, but they've already gained too much life because of that that thing. Um, hmm. That was my target for the Chronicler of Ruin. That's what I was hoping to Chronicler of Ruin. I could just save Chronicler, though. That's fine. I don't, I don't think we need a Fury of the North. All right, we'll just go Brom stick our And they so they gained zero life from their thorny toad because they were already at twenty. Something ancient stirs. Stirs. Are they gonna do attack with that thing? They're not attacking with that thing, right? My talents are frost. My like, I don't think I have to vengeance that. Yeah, they're not attacking with that. Well, a Nivea trigger is going to kill that. That should be in front of the 3 5. And so then these are just going to trade. I'll just let all that happen. Strike I could go Fury of the North to protect Starlet Seer. We'll just let this stuff trade, though. Don't know if they're going to be going... Weirding sounds. Don't know if they would be going with, like, a or something. Okay, so that's another Anivia. And I don't I don't want to chronicler or kill my Anivia yet. It's too it's too many turns to have that O O2. I don't think they're attacking with that. Actually, maybe they are this time. No, probably not. A new era begins. Sure it does. I feel this like that. This is fun, yes? Talk about your and yeah, no, no reason to vengeance that last turn because it would just come right back with them being enlightened now. A world in perfect stone. Tomorrow we rise anew. Oh, All right, I'll use grasp. On this Agnivia. So now I could Chronicler. Sure. Now we could Chronicler. This 
still have six mana to use for removal, but I have Glimpse Beyond. So if they want to kill my O2, I'll, I'll use Glimpse Beyond. Gets Braum to eight. So they attack with a Nivea and then Braum's at 10. I'll keep, I won't play the Omen Hawk. The Omen Hawk would die to an attack, but having 11 mana is important. So I can play one of my seven mana spells and have Fury of the North. This is kind of a silly game. Sure. Not playing another one of these things. Again, they still have Ruination mana. Ruination right now, though, we'd get to Anivia's back at least. Okay, no Ruination mana left. Um, let's go Trapper. Definitely a lot better than Carly Tavern Keeper would be. I mean, all their stuff dies. Come from the dark. They are, they are risking it. Problem's only one away now. So we've, we've taken out two Anivias and a Rekindler, right? So like basically three out of six Anivias. Wait, so that got rid of Vengeance and Withering Whale? What did that other one get rid of? Um, I don't remember where it died. I guess it would have died from the Braum. Uh, it's not not telling me. All right. Anyway, so that's their that's a third Anivia. They just cast hard cast it, or did they? No, they didn't hard cast that, did they? Yeah, I guess they did. Okay, yeah, they entreated for it. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Let's just go with the Hawk. So that's their last Anivia, but of course they can have Rekindler and things like that. Listen, they come. It's a lot of those things. It's a lot of those. Huh. Huh.
That's the card that I needed to watch out for, huh? Harrowing with millions of Anivias. Yeah, that harrowing looks amazing. Even though these are some ephemeral Anivias, they're going to die and just get a bunch of eggs. I need a, I need like an avalanche right here. Only attacking with three makes no sense. It makes no sense to not attack with this. Literally makes no sense to not attack with that. Just, just no sense whatsoever. All right, so all these things are dying. Might as well block with them. I will endure. I don't know. Are they worried about? Just worried about more three threes or something? Don't even get an extra 3-3. Because if another one attacked, I would get a new 3-3, but then this one would die. It would just trade off. It would just be the exact same. New era begins. So now I have the ability to play this now. I don't know if that helps. Oh, those things turn into O2s on my turn? No, no, okay, yeah, no, never, yeah, never mind. Another Anivia to attack with. I protect this place. That's risky. There, it blocks them. There we go. That's that's more like it. matches you you want to be the deck that goes bigger and my opponent's deck place. with harrowing it definitely goes bigger and with the help of, of entreat they found three anivias and then rekindler got a fourth and then uh, bring them all back with rekindler getting a fifth again like whenever rekindler comes back Go for it. They don't have removal. That could be game. Close. Might as well go for it. Now I'm down to three. where it's going to be really difficult to survive. This will take the chill off. Five Anivia triggers. This is where the party stops. It is easy. I bring the storm. Help me, I 
will endure. Man, this is gonna these are some slow animations. <laughs> Game's over. I got this one. Thought we were doing good when we were killing so many Anivias, but then that harrowing. Interesting card. For sure. I could see us playing a harrowing. Like a one copy of a harrowing. I could see that. See that? We see through all. Fear beyond. All right, GGs. Go bigger in mirror matches. That's for any any mirror match because mirror matches usually do come down to um, some attrition because you have like the same cards that are trading off with each other. So they, so they do come down to a battle of attrition. So if you're the one that can go bigger and have like some some big heavy hitters in the late game, you're gonna be winning most of the time. Now, some you know some games are one person just doesn't have the early cards and they don't get to trade and the other one runs them over because they have a great curve kind of thing. Like that, that also, also happens in mirror matches, but the majority of them Things trade off. So a card like like harrowing, their uh, huge swinging, uh, huge game swinging effect. Good to have. Don't like any of these cards. So let's send them all back. Don't want any of those against deep deck. Okay, at least we got Omen Hawk. This is gonna be another kind of tougher matchup because they could go bigger. We need to pressure them early and then have like the Anivia's late, but we, we need to get the pressure early. Unfortunately, these are just not the matchups for Vile Feast. You know, Vile Feast is kind of a necessity against. There's a good amount of different burn decks and things like that, so it's kind of a necessity. But with that being said, it's also pretty bad. Against a lot of decks. All right, so that'll do. We'll take rid of, take care of that thing. Um, another great part about Aver like the uh, the kindly tavern keeper is a play trigger. This is a summon trigger, so we do get to chronicler of ruin the uh, trapper and get another summon trigger. That's another another upside of playing Avros and Trapper right there. Maybe we'll draw another Yeti here and be able to go double Yeti. Give me the stuff to make happy. All right, at least they got rid of their other two treasures. See the Devastian border from here. Because the treasures will be able to block the Yeti real easily. Ugh. All right, at least the last Wanderer is gone too. Those are the two the two best cards in the in the deep deck, the two ones you want the most, Dredgers and Wanderer. Um Rescue 
I love that trade. They should not be. It's just a crappy one one. They should not be blocking there. That they should just keep that one their one one to block my five four the next turn. Like they they should just keep that around block five four the next turn. Like that that spiderling's not doing five damage. It's just it's just not. Man, they're already deep. Turn six. We gotta kill that thing. <clears throat> Alright, another one mana 5-5. Five five. Let's just go straight to attacks next turn. Try to attack for 16. Damage in. I'm telling y'all, one mana five fives are good. Better than gaining three life. Well, Nautilus is probably better than either. However. Not sure what's the better play, Trapper or Anivia. I'm not sure. That's a useless card. Probably the worst card to draw on the deck. I mean, I guess it could potentially. Could pot potentially gain three life if needed from like an atrocity kind of thing. But that. 7-7 seven, seven just took two mana. This, if they have a whole bunch of sea monsters, they're just going to unload their hand with sea monsters, and that will be the game. Man, I just spent 11 mana and still have four. Just spent 17 mana, still have two. Great hand. Great hand. Sometimes the, the deep deck gets you. Just gets deep on turn six. And then has, you know, Nautilus on seven. And then turn eight has two seven sevens that also obliterate two things and grasp the undying and they probably weren't even done okay so we do have a whole lot of cards in our deck that are slanted towards beating aggro decks like this. The Vile Beast, the Withering Whale, the Grass of the Undying, all that kind of stuff. Those are the cards that we had last game. Come closer. I don't bite. Um, that's what we want this game. Alright, good job, Starlet Seer. We have been drawing lots of units when we have been drawing the Starlet Seer. We haven't really been combining Starlet Seer with our spells too much. But it's just game number four. We ride for Noxus! Have you met my pets? Many legs. So Fury of the North would have been the safe card to take out Basilisk Rider. Yeah. This play is saying, okay, Basilisk Rider hits me. That's fine. And uh, we go from there. Would be a good winter. 
So this would be Braum uh, surviving this. That's 10 damage. Braum levels up. But playing Braum last turn helped us do. It means we get to level up Braum this turn. Still at 11. So not Darius range yet. We don't want to see Crimson Disciple. That makes our Withering Whale a lot worse. Doing this now so that if they have transfusion, they gotta use it now. Oh, an auspicious season. Run up down. Help is underway. GG's, alright, two and two. Yeah, I think I think that's kinda of where this Brahmanivia deck wants to be, is facing those kind of decks. Our hand our hand was good. For sure. But I mean, just kind of um, from a theoretical standpoint, like that's those are the kind of matchups that we would rather face than the million of Nivias with harrowing and things like that. The decks that go bigger. A big reason to play a bunch of Withering Whales is this deck. We need those Withering Whales? Do we need Brom? Hmm. Yeah. So, what do you? Okay, y'all, y'all. Let me know on on YouTube what you think. Is Anivia actually better than Sejuani? Because I'm not convinced that it is. I'm not convinced that just playing the same thing and if we have Sejuani, that and you know, like Anivia is better than Sejuani. I'm not convinced that at like in the slightest. Beauty charms while claws take hold. That's unfortunate. You lack subtlety. Maybe I just don't attack so that if they have Solitary Monk, they gotta put it back in their hands. I don't know, is this game over? tempting to play 5-5 five, five right now, but it's also tempting to next turn have, you know, four drop plus one drop. No, I think I think we play 5-5 five, five right now. I still see far and clear. The order rewards its faithful. What did we catch? Cool, we still got a, a one drop to play with a four drop next turn. Night falls. We'll lead with Omen Hawk so we have more information if we want to play Chronicler or Braum. That quick pass is kind of saying, hey, I'm playing Heimerdinger. Right? Well, I'll still do. I'm going to do Chronicler. Gets more power into play. And that can be really important with us having this Fury.
All right, come on, draw Enraged Yeti. The thing about... Okay, I was going to say the, the thing about how I... Um, how I sequenced with playing the Omen Hawk first is that the Enraged Yeti is just a 5-5 five because five the Omen Hawk did the, the other two things. Um, so that was the one bad part about how I sequenced with you keeping the decision open was that uh, I didn't get to have a 6-6. Six, six. And since we drew... If we didn't draw Enraged Yeti, I'd probably go straight to attacks. But since we drew Enraged Yeti, I'm going to play Braum and Yeti. And really strain removal. Think of how bad Kindly Tavern Keeper would have been in like all of these games. Just how much better like these Yetis are. What would it gain three life? Who cares? It can't be. Is that eleven? Looks like eleven to me. GG. So for those of y'all that, that like playing Brahm and Ivia, um, yeah, this deck's, you know, good against the, the lower, and so probably pretty good to play on the ladder, especially if you're playing against, a, like, a good amount of aggro decks, because I think this is, is pretty well, uh, situated there. Deep can be a problem, you know, like, those decks that can go really big can be a problem. We, we ran into two of those, um, but overall, our, our deck looked really good. If you have any takeaways, get Kindly Tavern Keeper out of your deck, play Averroes and Trapper, it's a lot better card, play this thing, um, drawing one mana five fives in the mid game is really good and so do that that's kind of what the starlet seer helps do also is it helps grow some things we didn't get to i didn't get to really show off starlet seer too much but still the, the starlet seer you know frequently trade like even like that last game you know just traded with our two drop uh their two mana three two and it just helped uh trading with the three mana or the two mana three two it really helped my avaros and trappers um and you know avaros and trapper chronicler ruin it just helped these things quite a bit it's an unsung hero in that game. So yeah, I like this list. I'd recommend this list for Braum, Braum and Nivea. Um, I, I don't love three Rekindlers. So two things. One, I I honestly think that there's a very good chance that Sejuani is better than Nivea. Like just playing the same deck, but just play Sejuani, that that's actually better. Um, the thing is, is like whenever we're doing that, it's like, why are we really playing Shadow Isles? But I guess it's it's for some removal spells. Like, is that really, like, the best region to be playing with the rest of these cards? Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe not. The Shadow Isles removal does help against aggro quite a bit. And then, of course, you have Rekindler, which Rekindler is super powerful. Um, I mean, Rekindler bringing back Sejuani is still still really good. Um, I could definitely see taking out the third Sejuani, though. Or, sorry, sorry, sorry. The third Rekindler. If you have something else at the top end you want to play, like if you want to try like how my opponent got that harrowing against us, that looked pretty spicy. If you want to play a spicy harrowing, uh, you know, feel free to do that. Um, anything else. If you want to go Sejuani's and then play like one Tusk Raider, I don't know. Like what if, if you have any spicy one ofs that you really like, I don't know, Atrocity. Rasa, Commander Ledros. Um, you want to play one Avalanche. Um you know, if you got you got any spicy one ups you want to play, that's probably the card to take out as the third Rekindler. But pretty good deck. Pretty good deck. Uh, helped us out here for rank up day. We are, uh, what are we, we're just one win away now? Yeah, we're just one win away. All right, so we just got to win our first one with Basilisk Aggro. I feel pretty good about that. Those of y'all watching this later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave those comments as well. I would appreciate that. But anyway... Thank you so much for watching some Brahm Anivia, and I'll see you for the next video.